Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Programming with a Purpose. In this video, I'm going to show you the updates related to WWDC24 for the MapKit framework. So this is how you are going to display a certain information according to a place. And you can access a place using a place ID. All of the controls inside this popover are clickable and you can perform different actions with it. So let's see how we can display such a sheet on the top of a place that we have selected and also how to display a place without using the latitude and longitude. You can also access the information like hours and phone number website other type of information that is being presented on this sheet. So let's see how to do all of this code. First, we are going to access the Apple website and we are going to look up a place ID that we want to display inside our map in Swift UI. So let's go to maps inside apple.com. So this is the website you are going to open, scroll down to the bottom. And here we are going to access this place ID lookup. Here you are going to enter the name of the place. So here I'm entering the name of the mountain K2, which is the second highest mountain of Karakaram. It's in Pakistan. So I have copied its place ID here. And here I'm going to type the place ID. So then I'm going to copy another place ID so that we'll be able to see different kind of views for two different places. So I'm going to access here the Apple Park. You can copy here the latitude and longitude as well. I'm using the place ID. Place ID is a unique identifier that is associated with the place. So this is quite helpful. Introduced in iOS 18. And uh, if a place gets shifted like a coffee shop or a pizza place, uh, the place ID will remain the same. Only the coordinates are going to shift. So this is the actual benefit of using the place ID. It Also, it's easier to store it inside your database. So here I have created a map. I'm accessing the element and put it in the marker. The item is not populated at this point. So I am getting here the identifier with the raw value from the place ID. So this is how we are going to get a identifier. So let's put a request to access this identifier, which is going to return us an map item. So here I'm passing it. All of this code is going to be asynchronous. Follow all of these steps. And this is how we are going to populate the item and it is being displayed on the map. You can use option plus command to zoom in and zoom out of the map. Press these two keys simultaneously. And on the map with the help of the mouse, you can basically pinch in and pinch out to zoom in from a place and zoom out. So here I'm showing you the nearby areas. You can check here this is the actual K2 mountain. You can also change the tint of this marker using this code. So this is the same place. So this is how we are going to access a place ID and create a map item for that place ID. Now, next, I'm going to show you here how we are going to access the map item details sheet. This is also a built in function, very simple to display it. It has an argument of display maps. If you set it to true, it is going to display the map inside the sheet. Otherwise, it is going to hide the map. So this is how it's going to look like. Now we need to write a code so that will be able to open and close it as per the user requirement. So I am creating another item here mk map item with the name of selected item and i have passed this to map item details sheet in the definition of map item detail sheet you are going to see that if the selected item or the item you are passing to it is nil it is going to display nothing on the sheet otherwise it is going to display all the information inside a popover sheet so this is the mechanism of hiding it we need to pass a nil item to it to hide it. So here I am creating a button that is going to populate this selected item whenever it is going to be clicked. So that a sheet pop overs whenever we click this button. 
here I'm creating a very nice UI for this button. I have created a Z stack so that we get whole of the view for the map and we display the button on the top of this map. So here I am giving it a background color, foreground color to the font, and then adding a fill to this background, which is green. So this is how it's going to work. So you have seen here, whenever we are going to click, the selected item is being populated from the item that we have already mentioned. So you are going to go to the definition to see the usage of this function. And you are going to see here that when the item is nil, a detail screen is not shown, it's hidden. And you have seen here that it is available for iOS 18 onwards. So this is all for this item details sheet as well as the place ID that can be used to access a place. So here I'm going to show you the same data for another place, which is an Apple Park Visitor Center. So you are going to see here there is a lot of information attached here. And that information is crawlable. So this is how you are going to access a place using a place ID and you can view its information using a map item detail sheet. So this is all. There are more updates that are presented for MapKit and WWDC24. I'm going to discuss them in my next video. Do not forget to like and share this video. Subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.